Oh my god, it is a literal wedge. I mean, look at that. <laughs> Hi there and welcome back to another 32 Bit Run episode and today we're looking at something rather special to me. It is the Toshiba Satellite T2130 CT laptop. A laptop that was released in 1996 for about £2,000 or something like that, I can't remember exactly. Um, it's rather thick, it's about 2 inches thick so it's not exactly a slim laptop by any means, or is it really that powerful for the time even with the 486 DX4 so running at 75 megahertz? The DX4 that's in this should actually be called a DX3 because only clock tripled, it's not quadrupled, therefore it didn't make much sense for them to go with that naming scheme. However, Intel probably had a reason for it at the time. Now, this laptop's been in the family for quite a while and belonged to a relative who worked for British Telecom and from there it's just kind of had a very hard life with lots of cracks and some other bits of damage on it and today I think we'll just we'll use it see what it's like to use Windows 95 in this point in time Windows 95 was released in a time when Windows 3.1 was about, and it was revolutionary in comparison. For example, we had the Start menu, which hadn't actually been seen before on previous versions of Windows. You could find all of your programs in this bit. For example, I have 7-Zip. <laughs> um, this front page I have installed for making websites. That is how I'm editing the Mad World of the Interweb. Some of the pages, however, it's not the official one. Um, and obviously it's got other programs with the pointer, like I've installed all, some of the Office 97 package and so on. But like every other old computer, this can run something rather special. So if we go to here and then go to here, this thing here. Well, load up, Doom. This thing here actually runs Doom not too badly, despite it being quite a, it's probably a decent pairing for Doom actually, except the fact it's got no sound card in it, so it's only got the beeper. It sounds a bit like this. So, as I'm wondering about, when I pick something up, it makes a horrendous noise. Like this, I would rather have the MIDI music and the real sound effect. However, nobody gets what they want in this day and age, so you just have to live with it. The laptop itself also has a 1 megabyte VESA compatible graphics chip, which would mean it would probably be ideal for SimCity 2000 or some equivalent. However, I haven't installed that yet, so we just need to wait. It's also got a screen here, 640 by 480, so it's just standard VGA. There's 250 cents colours, I believe. Um, I can't remember the size of it, it currently escapes me, but you can also see that I've got Word open. You will find the keyboard here is rather nice to work with. For example, I just like the sound of it. And your gobbledygook comes up on the screen dead easily.
laptop itself has a few ports on this side with your power button and two PCMCIA slots. It was evident of you will realise that this cover is missing, part of why this laptop is so beat up. It's also been added that you can plug it into your car with the cigarette lighter socket. It's a handy feature for myself because I can use this while being the passenger of a vehicle. On the rear, we have a parallel printer port, which I can use for CD-ROM, zip drives, printers, scanners, whatever. A standard figure 8 plug, because this thing has its own power brick built in. A dock connector here. A VGA connector here for our display. One of these serial connectors for a mouse or a modem or something. And a keyboard connector. I do not know if this does mice, but I shall try it at some point. On this side is a 3.5 inch floppy disk drive, which is a double speed one actually. There is also, as you can see here, a kind of frame round about there which makes me, which leads me to believe that it could have been a model with a CD-ROM drive. However, someone may be able to back me up on that. Additionally, you also see that everything's all starting to crack on this because of the age. It's very damaged and on the front you've just got the lights for power and battery. Opening the lid, there's obviously this keyboard, there is your buttons and a rather sticky pointer. LEDs up here, the thing for the charger, and under here is where you get your hard drive and your battery. So there we go, uh, thank you for watching this video, I hope to see you in the next one. In the meantime, like and subscribe. And most importantly, stay safe at this time. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you and good night.